Hi everybody and welcome to the Bear Necessities. I'm Bear and today we are doing a little bit something special for someone in my family. Uh, today is my husband's birthday. He's finally catching up with me in age. So we're making one of his favorite cakes, which is tres leches. Um, it's really traditional. Uh, he is of Mexican descent and it's just something he's always enjoyed. We're making it a little different though because we're combining one of the things I make a lot usually around the holidays that he really loves too. So also a banana pudding. So it'll have its traditional, like it's gonna have the different milks in it, uh, which are evaporated milk, sweetened condensed milk, and then I put a little bit of half and half and heavy whipping cream together instead of just using regular milk because I like that extra fattiness to it. Plus, you know, it makes it more rich, which is delightful. Um, but then on top of that, before we put on the whipped cream, as the top, we're actually going to put on a bit of banana pudding that I made earlier. You're not going to get the banana pudding recipe today that is coming up um, because this is not my traditional banana pudding that we're putting on there. So let's get started. Uh, you will need for this recipe one and one quarter cup of all-purpose flour, sifted, unsifted, it's fine. Just one and one quarter cup all-purpose flour. You will need half a teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of baking powder, and half a teaspoon of baking soda. You'll need a full stick of butter, or four ounces, half a cup of margarine, or whatever fat you use. Um, and if it's butter or margarine, you need to make sure that it's melted but cooled. You need one cup of sugar. I'm just using regular granulated sugar, no monk fruit, no substitutions. We're using the real deal two teaspoons of vanilla. I actually did a little bit extra of vanilla. Um, I'm using a Mexican vanilla in this and it, uh, it just adds these sweet floral notes to it. That's a little bit different than some of the vanillas that we get here, like a bourbon, things like that. I have three whole eggs and my mixer, Loretta. Y'all have met. Love her. All right, so let's get started. It's a really simple cake to put together. You just cream it all together and bake it. Also, before I forget, I'm gonna to try to actually remember, set your oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit and let it preheat because this moves really quickly. So you have your one and one quarter cup flour. We'll just add that in. This is one of those, you don't have to use a mixer to make it. I just kind of want to, I don't know. I had arm day the other day and yeah. So thank you Leland for that. He's my trainer. So we've got the flour in here and we're just gonna get this kind of started so we can start adding parts. And I know she gets loud, I'm so sorry. So now we're going to add our butter Remember that was melted and cooled butter. Our cup of sugar. And at this point you are going to have some lumpy, clumpy, buttery, floury mess. You're doing good. We're gonna start adding our eggs and I'm actually gonna grab back my little sugar bowl because sugar, whatever. Um, you never want to crack eggs into your mixer immediately. Um, lately, we haven't been getting pasteurized eggs, so we've gotten some that are a little bit not good, and that's what you want to check for. And you never want to crack the egg on the side of your bowl um, because you might get eggshell in there, and it's really not easy to get out of something like this. So. I'm going to stop her, one, she's loud, and two, I'm going to go ahead and add our eggs one at a time, and all three of them go in together, but cracking them one at a time. Okay, so I actually steered you wrong on the ingredients, so let's catch it now. I was like, hang on, that doesn't look right, so I looked my, my recipe one more time. I actually got it over here instead of going off my memory. Good idea. Um, it is five whole eggs, not three. 
So let's go ahead and add these last two. And of course, the ingredients list shown to one of my sides, probably on this side, um, will say the correct amounts of everything. So don't worry about that. We're just gonna add those in, and then we're gonna get this mix in. Just a little bit to get the eggs worked in. We're gonna add our vanilla. Okay, uh, that was my instant pot telling me that the rest of his dinner is almost ready. We made carnitas, so and they're like so easy in there, just saying. All right, let's continue. So now we have our five eggs. Our vanilla is in there, and we're going to add our salt, baking powder, and baking soda. And just scrape down the sides, make sure nothing's stuck. Sometimes it does. You'll notice there is no like real liquid liquid in this. We are depending heavily on the eggs and on that little tiny bit of vanilla. And again, I added extra because I love vanilla. And I'm going to remind you again, go ahead and make sure your oven is preheated to 325 degrees. So got you there. And you're going to say, oh my goodness, that big pan with such a little bit of cake. You have to remember, we're going to be putting so much liquid into this cake, <laughs> so it doesn't need to be a huge amount of batter. And it will also inflate a bit on its own, so it comes out to be a very nice sponge. Everything's going off in my kitchen because it's a busy day. Sorry, y'all. So, let's... Get this kind of smoothed out just a little bit. It will self-level a bit, but it's always nice to give it a helping hand or spatula. Okay, so I'm going to get this into my oven. Remember, 325 degrees. And it is going to bake about 22 to 27 minutes. Um, really depends on your on your oven. Mine will probably be closer to 24, but we will see. So when we come back, the cake will be done and we will get to move on. All right, everybody, welcome back. Our cake is baked. It's got a lovely color and it pulled away from the sides ever so slightly. You'll notice it did puff up a little bit, but it wasn't gonna do much and that's okay. Usually I would use half the size of a pan to get the taller rise but because I'm adding banana pudding and things to it, it needed to be a bit bigger. So, the cake is still very warm. It's cooled for about 10 minutes, but it's still quite warm so that we can continue and make it super delicious. All right, so I have grabbed a uh, chopstick. You can use whatever if you have toothpicks, a fork, you know, a skewer, whatever you have, because the cake, um, we're going to warm the milk together and then we're going to pour it over. And so you need to have some holes in the cake just to help it really absorb as much of the milk as possible. So I've poked it a 20 times, who knows? So what I have for the milk mixture is one and a half teaspoons of vanilla. Again, this is my Mexican vanilla, but you can use whatever you have. Don't worry. I have one total cup. This is half uh, heavy whipping cream, so half uh, half a cup. And then half a cup of uh, half and half. I use a non-fat half and half because um, my tummy, so it's what we have. And just mix those together. And I'm gonna go ahead and put those into my pan and get all that lovely, rich deliciousness from the heavy whipping cream in here. And before you ask, yes, uh, vegan and veg uh, veg vegetarian alternatives do work, like coconut milk works really well. All right, I have one full can of evaporated nonfat milk. And this is a 12 ounce can. 
and I have one full can of of specifically La Lechera, um, uh, sweetened condensed milk. It's just more traditional to use. Sweetened condensed milk is generally the same as it's made. So get whatever you have. Eagle brand works really well. Store brands are fine. Just use what you have. And then get that just a little stir to make sure. All right, have to wash those out so I can recycle them. And finally, I have some rum extract. Uh, we don't keep alcohol in the house just because none of us really drink, so eh. Um, but if you're going to use actual rum, do about a shot. So about an ounce, two tablespoons will work really well. For this, you need half a teaspoon to maybe a teaspoon if you want it to be like a real big punch. Because again, this is an extract and it does actually have rum in it, but it's evaporated down. So there's such a minute amount of alcohol, you're not going to be able to detect it. But let's just give it a good half teaspoon, just so it's not too much flavor. So let's get this warming. It doesn't have to boil. It just needs to warm enough that it kind of mixes everything together really, really well. And thankfully this cooktop heats really fast. So induction cooking y'all, I'm gonna keep tooting its horn. And while that heats, we're going to put this to the side and let it just heat through. And we're gonna go ahead and make the whipped cream uh, for the top of the cake as well. So let me get everything arranged and I'll be right back. Alrighty, so like I said, uh, while the milk is heating through, which let me give it a good little stir so it can continue going. I don't want it to scald, just in case. There we go. I'm starting to feel a little heat. Um, let's measure out one and one quarter cup of heavy whipping cream. I'm gonna go ahead and reuse my heavy whipping cream measure. Uh, you need four tablespoons of sugar, which I have in here. And you'll need either one teaspoon of vanilla or half teaspoon and half teaspoon of the rum. But let's get everything into the mixing bowl. And we're going to beat this to stiff peaks. And as soon as it's done, we're just going to cover it with some plastic wrap or a towel or whatever. And let it just sit in the fridge and get nice and cold. Put our whisk on. And then our half teaspoon. And just a little bit of the rum extract. Maybe half a teaspoon, but not quite. Oh, okay. Uh, the milk is ready. It has already started to steam. It's only been two or three minutes. Um, but you just want it to start to steam. You don't want it boiling hot. You just want it warm through. And so turn off my cooktop. And just let it sit there while we finish up the whipped cream. And we're going to whip this on kind of medium, medium high uh, for just a couple of seconds to start getting it frothy. And we're going to start slowly adding in our sugar. So let's get this going. All right, so we have achieved stiff peaks with our whipped cream. Just so we've got that. And like I said, I'm going to cover that with, uh, with uh, wrap and put it in my fridge just to chill because the cake itself needs to come down in temperature. Otherwise your whipped cream, or in my case, banana pudding will melt. If you're not adding something in between like I am, you can actually do soft peak whipped cream and it'll be nice and velvety and luscious and delicious. So we've got our liquid here and we're just going to pour over the top of the cake. 
and it's like, oh my gosh, there's so much liquid there. There is. And most of it will absorb, not all of it. And since I'm adding the pudding on top, I don't want it to be too terribly drowned just yet, but I have a plan for this leftover milk. I'm going to let it cool and then thicken uh, just a little. It won't thicken up too much because of everything else that's in it. Um, and we'll just use it to kind of drizzle over the cake once we're serving it because it has the rum flavor and everything. And since I'm putting a banana pudding, it'll take on a little bit of a banana's foster flavor that is just delicious. Come on. It's getting happy, but it's starting to reach its limit. So we are good. And I still have maybe three quarters of a cup of the liquid out of all that I put in there. So now we've got this ready and we've got the whipped cream ready. So I'm going to go ahead and get everything covered and put into the fridge to chill for about an hour to an hour and a half. It doesn't have to be ice cold, but it does need to be cool and below room temperature would be great. Uh, so let's get all of this chilling. And when they come back, we are going to put it all together and we have cake. And then it's time to celebrate my husband's birthday. Alrighty, everybody, it has been a while. We have had dinner. It was amazing, if I do say so myself, and I do because I made it all. Um, <laughs> it was delicious. Um, so let's get the cake put together because you can't celebrate without the cake, right? Uh, first, I'm gonna go ahead and slice up a banana. Uh, you don't have to be here for this, honestly. Uh, because this does have the banana pudding on top. So let's just get that done. And I have my offset spatula and this is a very ripe banana. So spatula works very well. You use what you have and don't make more dishes. That is the key to a happy kitchen. All right, so banana is sliced. Let's start putting it together. Cake has absolutely absorbed as much of this as possible. It is soft, it is tender, and it is delicious smelling. Um, this is my banana pudding that I made to put over it. I know it looks a little weird. It's because I uh, cooked and caramelized the bananas. So, so I figure with the, uh, the rum, it's gonna taste a little bit like bananas foster. Yum. So get the banana pudding spread. I'm not putting a huge amount on it just because it doesn't really need it. It's just to add a little bit of a creamy layer before we put on the whipped cream. Cause you know, you can't, you can't overdo this. It's cake. Like if you're not gonna go crazy on that, then what are you gonna go crazy on? All right, so whipped cream set up nice and soft and fluffy. So I'm gonna get about half the whipped cream and just spread it all out. Maybe a little bit more than half. Sorry for all the noise, y'all. As I always say, it ain't perfect, but it's gonna be good. Okay. Yum. And now let's just put a couple of slices of banana. These are fairly thick slices. And I'm only gonna put them on part of the cake because I have someone in the house who doesn't like bananas. I don't know. So a little banana on one side, only banana pudding on the other. He can handle that. And there we have it. Chef's treat, always fun. Make it your own, as I always say. Make it fun, enjoy it. It's cake. This is the time to indulge a little bit in moderation. So make it a crazy cake, but have the right amount. All right, y'all, until I see you again, bye.